As promised, we got Fit Like Candy, aka Hi. Candace. Hello. Um, so what we're gonna do is we'll take some of your uh, user comments as we go live, and um, just I mean be yourself, you do your thing. So first and foremost, Candace, you know you you, you popped on the scene. I mean, I've probably known you for about what, four or five years. I just knew you as a gymnastics girl, you know. So one thing I like to do is like to peel back the onion on people, like so they really understand who the person is. So before you got here, where did you start? So five years ago, what were you doing? Five years ago, I was um, coaching. I was coaching gymnastics, and I was engaged actually. I remember that. Yeah, um, I was head coach of a really. Um, Great gymnastics time out in Cypress, Texas. Um, I had a great time doing it. Gymnastics is like one of like I just love gymnastics. It's like a passion for me. Um, I was a gymnast growing up my whole entire life. Not my whole entire life. That's cat. Uh, for uh, for four years, seven to the age of eleven. But after that, I cheered for a very long time. So yeah, that's where I was five years ago, coaching gymnastics. I remember that, man. And so if y'all don't know, man, Candace has been a part of the hoop jargon little thing for a minute. Uh, she actually came to a flow trip about three, four years ago. And uh, she was doing backflips outside of, uh, where were we at? By the way, you were turned. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Speaking of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, we was outside the Waffle House and somebody dared you couldn't do a backflip and we was all turned up and you out there and did a backflip. So I, I remember that. I remember that like vividly. So. <laughs> you athletic motherfucker. But those yeah. who don't know, this girl athletic as hell. Yeah. Um, yeah, so okay, so let's go. You said you mentioned you cheered, and so you know, most people know you as being a former Texas cheerleader. So explain that experience and how that was for you. Yeah, so um after gymnastics when I was eleven, can you hear me? Do I need to go inside? No, you're good. I hear you. Because you sure? they're like building outside. I hear you pretty fine. Okay. So um yeah, I at the age of 11, I quit gymnastics, and then I started cheerleading. And I cheered in high school. I was captain of my cheerleading team in high school, varsity all four years. And then um, in college, I um, cheered at South. And after South, you know, I kind of took a break from cheer because I was, like, engaged in a fiancé, and I was, like, trying to be wifey and shit. And so, um, you know, I just I took a break from all that. But after I got out of that relationship, I started um, dancing again, and I tried out for the Texans, and I don't know, I made it. So yeah. How crazy was that? Like the, all these fans, like fifty thousand fans, uh, uh, you know, every Sunday, and they're just doing it. You got to focus and do your thing. Like, explain how that felt doing that. You know, it wasn't. It did. It, there. It's a great feeling. It's a great experience, but. When you're out there and you've trained, you know, and done these dances millions and millions of times, it's like second nature to you. It's not like you're you're really not thinking about it. Like it's fun. Like for me, that's what I like to do. I like to perform. I like to be in front of people. You know, I like to flirt with my eyes and smile and shit. And, and you know, so it was it wasn't like scary to me. You know what I mean? And plus, I had been, you know, a cheerleader for like my whole life and performing. So. It really was. It was a great experience, though. It's like it was like you just have to experience it to know what the experience is like. So, yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. And I can liken that to I mean, when I played basketball. I mean, we played against University of Louisville. It was forty thousand yeah. in there. It's just like it was like holy shit. All right, okay. Then it's like all right, let's play. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. And that, that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. And, and athletes, you you got to compartmentalize. You got to be able to understand. Yeah, it's a lot of shit going on, but I got to do what I've been trained to do the whole week, the whole month. The whole few months and execute so um right. i think that's they kind of have segue you into what you're doing now and so uh, i remember us having this conversation was it new year's eve uh um, before you move to cali yeah. uh, i don't know i don't know but we did have this conversation we we literally had this conversation that's crazy yeah um yeah it was probably like three months ago about three months yeah about four yeah so but I remember one thing I, I remember was your was your undying passion for this. And so what you see, well, you know what, before we get there, let's flip to where you are now, because hold on, I, I don't want to spoil that part. I want to talk about the, 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 the pop and rap career last. You know, that's who you are now. But hey, OK, so you went from being a Texas cheerleader and then you became a social media fixture. Explain to me how, how that happened. OK, so. Honestly, 
after my like after ending that relationship with my ex fiance, I prior to even ending that relationship because the relationship I'm not gonna, he was a great guy, great man. Shout out to him, amazing guy. Sure. Um, but we just weren't compatible. It just didn't work, you know. Whatever. Um, and while I was in that relationship, one of the ways that I coped with um you know the difficulties that we were having was fitness um it like just going to the gym and running on the treadmill or doing like different exercises really helped me you know cope with everything that was going on so i just became i want to say i came addicted i became addicted but i just love i started loving fitness so much and then you know, once I, once the relationship ended, like officially, um, I started going to a gym out in Houston called Muscle Heads. Um, really great gym. Cliff over there owns the gym. Great guy. Um, he told me, he was like, you need to start posting stuff on your Instagram. You need to start posting like you doing fitness. And I was just like, ah, whatever. Cause I, you know, I never really was like, I never really cared about Instagram like that, you know? And so I kind of, didn't listen to him for a while, but then I started posting and I was weird. Like people liked it. It was people just started, you know, wanting more. They wanted me to do workouts. And so I started doing Candice's workout of the week and just, it just blew up. So yeah, that's how I became fit like candy. That's dope, man. And um, it's just funny to see the transition. Now I know you got a, a well over hundred K followers. I see the, the, the thirst all over every time you get on. I see Corey Holcomb constantly your stuff i see tyrese on your stuff so you know um i guess how have you taken getting that type of attention where normally that that's not your thing you know it's it's cool um but for me that attention doesn't like i would rather put i would rather people put that intention that attention towards what i truly like care about you know like you know um my music and you know sometimes i feel like i get attention for the wrong crap and that that's a little annoying but i mean it's cool having you know people who fuck with you that's that's dope you know uh i don't know it's just cool fair enough, fair enough. i don't want to put you on the spot I, I just know you know it's hard to kind of really engulf yeah. you know that whole thing but i mean it's, yeah. it's just, in the day i mean you have a you have a pretty prominent profile and so i just want my you know the users to understand that and again, you're, you're hoop jogging affiliated. So my whole point is to really get to know who you are. So right. understand that, you know, to support, I mean, this is one of our, our own in, in the group. So, you know, I want them to understand who you are basically. So, right. okay. So you, you got this newfound, you know, online fame and what have you. And so now it's permeated to you doing your true passion. So how long have you been write, uh, rapping before, you know, you kind of coming out with it now? I wrote my first song when I was seven years and um, funny story. I got a whooping for it because <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was, it was a bad, it was a terrible, it was very explicit. Like, I don't even know what the fuck was going through my head. Can I cuss on here? Go for it. I cuss all the time. Okay. Are people commenting? I can't yeah. even see what people are saying. They, they uh, are. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. uh, it's kind of slow. So I, um, yeah, I, I started when I was seven. Um, I got a whooping for my first record that i wrote and then um when i got when i went to south i started you know probably when i was like 18 started really taking it seriously and my parents told me that they wouldn't fuck with me if i kept like pursuing a rap career it was kind of messed up so scary you know i'm 18 years old i'm just now moved out of the house like my parents are telling me they're not gonna like support me if i do this like i'm talking support me like in any kind of way not just like mentally and physically like financially like everything you know so i i took a break from it i would still dibble and dab in it sometimes and i would always write verses but i never i never took it serious until about three years ago and yeah ever since then i've kind of been working 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 and i have a catalog full of stuff ready to go so we're excited nice nice and so yeah. where are you originally from, Ken? Illinois. Okay. Illinois, yeah. O'Fallon, Illinois, right outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, small, small, small town. Everybody knows each other. Yeah. That's where I'm wow. from. That's a hell of a story. You know, most rappers come from the urban, you know, big cities. 
situation. So you coming from who knows where the fuck Illinois. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty dope. That's exactly. Who knows where the fuck Illinois. That's perfect. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So now you, you, you kind of come into, you mentioned your, your past relationship. That's kind of, I got to know you being connected with the Prairie View Pipeline. Yeah. So once you got there, how did you kind of find who would, you know, fuck with you on that level and, and, and produce your music and get you on out there like that? How did I find the people that I work with now? Yeah. Um, so crazy. Okay. This is this this is a real feel story. So the whole reason I even got back into music is because I went to a strip club one day. Okay. No, I can't make this up. So I was at it was in Houston, Texas. Sound about right. <laughs> the engine room or something like that. Engine room or the address. I don't know which one it was. It kind of like fucked me up. I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't know which one is which. Anyways, okay. so I was at that club and then I was walking out or whatever. And this guy stopped me and he was like, what do you do? Like he just, you do something. And I was like, uh, I don't do anything. But at that time I was cheering for the Texan. Okay. So then um, he, he was like a, uh, you cheer for the Texans, come in. I want to, I want to get you a bottle, sit down. I'll get you a hookah, like whatever the fuck. They just wanted me to like be in the club or whatever. Yeah. So I was in the club and I was drinking my little drink. And then the owner of the club was like, yeah, I'm telling you about everything. And he was like, we got a studio upstairs. And I'm like, oh, we got a studio upstairs. I was like, let's go. Let's like, let's just go make a record. And then just to like play around. And then I ended up making a record and ever since then, I just like, I don't know. I just really been rocking with it. I just been, it's, I've been consistent ever since then at, nice, at, at the strip club. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and, and the reason why I asked you that question so specifically is because I know a lot of people aspire to, you know, pursue their passions or what have you. And you got to understand, man, when your moment hits, you got to be ready to move on it. So, I didn't Hold know on. exactly how. Can I, can I do this really quick? My phone's about to, not, not my phone, my laptop's about that. Can I go get my charger? Go for it, go for it. Okay, okay, I'll be right back. I'm sure y'all appreciate that runoff, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I appreciate y'all y'all hopping on. And um, so I just want to know, I'll let y'all know for this next few months, man, I'm going to have a whole bunch of these interviews going, have a whole bunch of guests. I'm going to have a whole bunch of uh, stuff that y'all going to like. It's gonna be all over the palette, like so. It just won't be one thing. I know we like the, the eye candy sector, so this is where we at now. Um, this is actually, you know, a cool person that I do know personally. So, yeah, I want y'all to kind of get to know a little more behind the the, the IG account. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> I didn't answer your question just then. That's all right. You got time. Go hook your stuff up. Okay. <laughs> Making fun of me. No, I'm laughing at, at these comments. Are you? Are you are what are they thinking about me? They're saying some mean shit. I know they're, they are. No, they're not actually. <laughs> People be saying some mean ass shit about me, bro. I mean, that, that's, that's gonna come with it. Just rude, and I'm like, bro, why do you feel the need to just be like an asshole? You know, that shit's Cause they, black. Because they want a response from you. That's why. Yeah, true. I need to People hate on my videos. I'm like, you don't know shit about basketball. There ain't in this world I know. I know basketball. I mean, it is what it is, man. <laughs> that boy said uh, it was nice. Hey, feel free to ask questions as we're going along, guys. You know, I don't know y'all thirsting right now, but yeah, yeah, y'all want to focus and go ahead. All right, so yeah, go ahead and answer the question that you didn't answer. Um, yeah. So, like I said, I the the person that I was working with prior to working with who I'm working with now. Um, that's how I linked up or whatever and so you know everything was like great i was making records whatever and i was meeting people whatever whatever but at the end of the day the way he wanted to set up like the, the person i was working with the way they wanted to set up a contract i wasn't fucking with it yeah. so uh we kind of just that relationship was lost um, and so then I was at a point where I was like, okay, I really want to pursue my music career, but like, I don't really have anybody on my side. Like, what do I do? You know? So, um, I just was like, like I can't quit. And I just started reaching out to people. So, um, I sent DMS on Instagram. I sent DMS to so many different producers. Um, and one of those producers, well, the first producer actually 
that hit me back was um, Mr. Lee. So Mr. Lee, yeah, out of um, from Louisiana, um, he has like a huge sound in the South, um, really big in Houston, mm -hmm. and so he hit me back, and it wasn't, it was like a really dry like DM. It was like <laughs> for real, it was a dry DM. He just like I, I asked him like you know how much for a beat or whatever, and then he was just like boom and gave me the price, and so I was like. I was like, okay, well, I want to collab with you. And he was like, all right, um, come to the studio. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, um, I'm going to come right now. And I was literally in my room, like typing in him. I was like, I'm coming right now. I'm about to book a flight, like no joke. And he was like, damn, we'll just come tomorrow. And I was like, okay. So I ended up um, text, not texting him, uh, DMing him the next day. And I was like, yo, I'm coming to the studio, whatever, whatever. And I flew out to uh, Dallas, Texas. And I met up with Mr. Lee, which was fucking crazy. I was like starstruck. And um, I recorded a record with him and uh, boot me up JT. He's a really good engineer out here in Dallas. He engineers for Yellow Beezy and Trap Boy Freddy. He's like awesome. Um, but I, I did a verse um, at the studio. Mr. Lee told me to get a hotel and then come back the next day and do the second verse. So that's what I did. And then after, you know, I did that verse, we exchanged numbers. He told me to send me more of my catalog. I sent him my catalog and he ended up texting me at eight o'clock that night. And he was like, yo, you got some dope shit. I'm gonna call you in the morning. Boom. Woke up the next morning. He called me at like 11 on his way to work and he asked me to be his artist. So that's pretty much how it all happened. And um, those of y'all who don't know who Mr. Lee is, uh, like I said, he's the sound of the fucking South. He is a phenomenal producer. He's produced records for people like uh, Rick Ross, uh, 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 fucking Slim Thug, Bun B, Pimp C, Killa Killian, um, shit. He fucking did a record for the, he has a plaque with the Backstreet Boys, Paul Wall, um, he discovered Iggy. Like there's so there's there's he's so credible and he has 40 different plaques. And sorry, I don't mean to go on and on about Mr. Lee, but he just dropped an album um, to, on Friday, and it's called 20 Years of Power with a lot of great people on there. You should go check it out. Okay, I'm done. Shout out to Mr. Lee. Yeah, man. Shout so. <clears throat> Yeah, so and I, I asked that question because I want people to understand the process. Like a lot of people just think because, you know, fame just or like support just falls in your lap. You got to go out there and get it. And I like the part of you saying you're going out and DMing people. That that's You're taking time out your own day. People ain't just coming to you. So I want people to understand like to you to succeed, you don't just sit on your ass and just hope it comes, man. Like these interviews I do, I be on people's ass about doing them. I don't just sit back and hope, oh, all right, yeah, everybody's going to interview a clip. No, you gotta go out and do it. So I want people to understand that, man. Cause you gotta go out and work for it. So I love that story. And I love the fact that you've been doing music for a while. So it's not something just uh you decide you know how it goes with the SoundCloud rapper age. Oh yeah. I, I freestyle one time drunk. Yeah, let, let, let me go ahead and record in the studio. Everybody say I'm in the studio. Everybody say yeah, and now I'm a rapper. And that's the thing though, that's what's crazy is everybody like says stuff like like your friend who commented, I hope he's fucking on here because I want to tell him this. Whoever commented and said, oh, IG modeled Texas cheerleader to a rapper or whatever the fuck okay. he said, I don't know. People yeah. say, oh, you went from IG model to rapper or you, you went from a cheerleader to being rapper. Or, but no, no, you guys don't understand. I was doing this prior to all that. Before I had 200 followers on Instagram, I was rapping. So like I, I that, that needs to stop. I, I don't like when people do that. Well, I think it's important because <clears throat> people are going to assume until they know. So it's important you get your message out there. Like, I've been doing this for a while. Like, this is not something yeah. that I've woke up. Because, I mean, to be fair, in this genre, a lot of people wake up and decide they want to rap. You feel me? Like, yeah. I, I rapped when I was like 19 and I was good at it. I didn't like it. And people didn't take me serious. You know what I'm saying? But I, I listen to it now and people kind of, you know, they're like, okay, you was all right to be a 19 year old. Yeah. So you, you got to understand. The, the industry is so conflated, but you actually fucking with people who are legit producers and it's something that's been on your heart for a minute. So it's just good to get your story out so people will know. Right, right. Yeah, I um, I am blessed to have, you know, people who really are supporting me and this, you know, while I have a lot of people that say 
stuff that's not so nice. You know, <laughs> I have Mr. Lee, who is so credible. Um, you know, DJ Michael Watts, which is like- Hold up, watch. Is insane to me. No, DJ, no, DJ Michael Watts just chopped and screwed. I He, he chopped and- the, he chopped and screwed one of my first records and he I like loved it. Yeah. And I, it's crazy. That's just like the craziest thing ever. So having support like that not only makes me, you know, more confident as an artist, but it's it's a blessing as well, you know? That's awesome. And yeah. then keep riding that wave. And so let's talk about you know, your project. So you just come out with your solo project. So uh, tell us what's going on with that. So I, okay, so I just dropped a single called Boss. Um, you sure you can hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, I just dropped a single called Boss. Um, you can find it on all digital platforms. Um, and I just dropped a music video to that single, Boss, and that's on YouTube and all that. I am getting ready to drop a, a project on May 22nd. So that project is, it, the, the project is has 13 tracks, um, and they're all, it's, it's all pretty, they're not, it's, it's not like a, they're all pretty all over the place. I have tracks for everyone. I have a pop track on there. I have a song where I'm singing. Um, I have twerk songs, a couple of those on there. Um, I have, I, I have a single, I think this is the next single that we're getting ready to drop. It's called I Got My Own. And um, it's me paying homage to Biggie. So um, it's a sample from, uh, gosh, it's a sample from a Lil' Kim song. Okay. And yeah, we're we're paying homage to Biggie. It's 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 a great song. Um, it's kind of like a has like a like an East Coast feel. Um, and then I have some other like cool just rap, hip hop kind of sounding songs. So yeah, I'm I'm super 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 excited to drop my project on May twenty second. It's called Candyland. Candyland. Okay. All right. That's a nice yeah. little segue. Okay. Yeah. Now so how can people uh, access your, your your content so they can uh, take a listen to it and download it and all that? So you can find me on any, you know, digital platform, whether that's Spotify, iTunes, um, Tidal, Pandora, um, uh, Amazon, whatever your whatever you have, I, I'm on it. So just type in fit like candy. Um, and all of my um, work is com should come up. I have three records out right now. Um, I have my single boss that we've been pushing. I have, um, and I have two records on, well, three records on Mr. Lee's uh, 20 Years of Power. The, the first record is called Come Over on that. Well, the first record is called Boss, and that's my single. The second record is called Come Over, and that's when DJ Michael Watts uh, chopped and screwed, which is oh, great. Yeah, and then the third record is called Intentions, and that one has that record Intentions has Slim Thug on it. So yeah, Slim Thug, Slim Thug. Now I actually yeah. went to high school with Slim Thug, so man, that's really? dope. Man. Yeah, he was a yeah. senior when I was a freshman at He's, Eisenhower. So oh, that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, man, that's that's what's up, man. Slim is a well. I remember Slim. Slim was the only cat I know who was in high school who had his own apartment that was like a celebrity. A regular ass student, but live like a grown ass man. And a lot of people say that. I witnessed that. I was just like, "How's this dude doing this?" I could imagine being eighteen with my own shit like that. So yeah, uh, he, he always get big respect from me. So yeah, uh, yeah. Whether he know that or not, you know about me, you know, being an underclassman, admiring because he can't hoop. He a, he a six foot seven dude cannot play basketball at all. So <laughs> we used to, I see him talking basketball like Slim. Stop, man. You, you don't know that. Major <laughs> lane, homeboy. But nah, so yeah, big respect. That's, that's dope to get a, uh, a track with Slim. Um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah, but yeah, the project, um, Candyland, I have um, Slim is on that. We're going to put that record on my project. Um, I have, and then I also have a record with um, Ty Dolla Sign on okay. that project. That's big. Um, well, on my, um, my, my project coming out on May 22nd. Well, we, we, we definitely going to be on the lookout for that. That's dope. That's a lot of yeah. good people on there. Now, let me ask you, um, so who would you say you would compare your style to? No one. Okay. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> but <laughs> I, will answer. I, I will tell you the artist that I, you know, really love. Um, my favorite rapper is Lil Wayne. Okay. Um, I love Cardi B. 
Um, I like her energy and I like her story. That's why I like Cardi B. Okay. Rihanna, I love Rihanna. Um, and that's all I have right now to tell you because I can't, okay. have nothing, no one else coming off the top of my head. Okay, so. well, that's good. I mean, you don't want to be. No, you know, Nicki Minaj. I okay. went through Nicki Minaj's whole YouTube y yesterday and I was impressed. I went for. Have y'all ever seen Nicki Minaj's YouTube all the way from when she wasn't even like really performing? She was just like, she was fucking with Young Money. Like she would go on stage, but she wouldn't like spin. Uh -uh. Hey, I like Nicki Minaj. I like Nicki Minaj just from watching that kind of shit. Yeah. I ain't got another time. So yeah, I, I like seeing the whole evolution of an artist. Like, cause she, yeah. I mean, Tupac used to be a background dancer for Digital Underground and then yeah. worked his way into like the most influential hip hop person at the time. You know what I'm saying? So you never know the backstory. So that's why I'm always asking, like, you know, what happened before this? Because that makes the story beautiful from seeing from, from beginning to end. And so yeah. I think that's pretty dope. And uh, OK, so we got the album uh, coming up. You got the work with, T with Ty Dolla Sign. You got the work with Slim. You got Dr. Lee producing. So yeah. uh, now one thing you see in this age is if you're good at one thing, you're good at another. So anything else you want to delve into while you got this prominent you know, spotlight? Um. No, just my album coming out, Candyland. Look for that okay. gold. Watch my YouTube video. But now, okay, cool. And I'll make sure I put the link, uh, guys, on here, uh, and, and check out, man. She, she, her videos fire, content's fire, man. So y'all, y'all definitely gonna enjoy that and share that, purchase that, buy it. We ain't doing this shit for free. <laughs> <laughs> lastly, before we get out of here, man, I know one of the biggest thirst uh, <laughs> entities in this group for a long time has been Bundle of Britney. And uh, I know you, you've had some posts with her back in the gap, you know, uh, I guess explain how, how you know her. Um, I don't know her personally. Well, I believe. Okay. Um, so I don't know Brittany personally, but we've met. I, I used to work with a guy that used to manage her. Okay. He doesn't manage either of us anymore, but, um, I used to work with him and she had an event. So he told me to come down to the event. So I came down to the event and that's where I met her. But it, it wasn't like, it's not like I can call her and be like, what up girl, Hi, you know what I'm saying? It ain't yeah, not like yeah, that, yeah. but I, okay. I, you know, I met her. Okay. And, and she's, she's great. She was actually, um, she was actually my fitness inspiration. When I, she's one of the reasons why I started this fitness journey and social media because of Bundle of Brittany, I really loved, you know, um, she's a beautiful woman and she has a beautiful body. Hey, no, no uh, contention over here. <laughs> I got to ask this question. This is my personal question. Yeah. But what's up with the, when y'all show the, the body and y'all show this little hip, this little kind of hip. Man. What is that, man? I'll peep game on that. Okay, so you you can, look, okay, let me show you. So you got, you know what I'm saying? You got this, which, what do you see? You don't really, you, like, can you see anything? No, you can't even, you you can't even tell that I have a fucking V cut. Okay. You feel me? Like that, that you got to show that. That's why we do that for the okay. V cut. I, I always wondered what that was about. I was just like, yeah. I noticed it. I ain't mad at it, but I just like, what is that? Like, <laughs> Yeah, you got to show the V cut. Okay, all right, that's what it is. Yeah. So you're showing the V cut. So all y'all fellas was wondering what the hell that's about. That's showing the V cut. Oh, that's what they're asking me? No, no, that's just something I always thought myself. Oh, I, mean, I always show that little, little corner right there. All right, you gotta show the, everybody don't have a V cut. Did they know? So you gotta show it. <laughs> that's for damn sure. You know, I ain't putting no names out there beside myself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool, man. And so, Ken, this has been dope, man. Um, yeah. I hope we can do this again because I definitely want to chronicle your progression throughout this. Um, one thing that always resonated with me was you, you're a go-getter. And you're one of the people who, I like to interview people who are, who have the audacity to think big. Yeah. No matter what the next man thinks about your decision or what have you. Like I had Cynthia Cooper and she was saying, failure was never an option for her. Who? And Cynthia Cooper. Okay, yeah. You interviewed yeah. her? Yeah, I interviewed her uh, two weeks ago. Okay. Sorry, so, I had to do that. No, go for it. Okay. So um, my, my thing is um, I'm big on showing people like, man, get off your ass and go out there and get what's for you. Because and so again, you. my conversation, I'm with some of the stuff we didn't agree on. And I'm okay with that, man. Anybody consider a friend. Like I, I'm going to shoot it to you how, how I see it. 
and you can give it back to me like oh okay i hear what you're saying but yeah i i, I don't i ain't fucking with what you're saying and yeah. so that's something that resonated a lot with me so I, I i really appreciate you coming on here for one and two appreciate you doing your thing man a lot of people talk about doing stuff but they don't actually do it so that's one thing i, I definitely respect about what, what you got going for sure for sure, for sure. So, all right, guys, man, check out Candy. Take us away. Tell us again how people can get to you and your content. You guys can follow me on Instagram, on all social media platforms at Fit Like Candy. Um, that's F I T L I K E C A N D Y. Um, and you can follow me on all streaming platforms, digital platforms at Fit Like Candy. Same thing. You can find me everywhere at Fit Like Candy. Google me, Fit Like Candy. YouTube, Fit Like Candy. Whatever everything fit like candy go follow me i love you guys thank you guys for tuning in and go watch my music video please do go watch it now we sitting at about 3k views in three days so we need to boost some things up so i'm gonna yeah we do for sure play a little bit as we peace out all right candy stay on after we uh finish i'm about to end okay. this y'all thank y'all for tuning in for we got another interview i hope y'all enjoyed it like the comments y'all crazy <laughs> ain't something y'all know already but man see you next time bye y'all